The rectus sheath block is a very useful fascial plane technique that is safe, versatile, and easy to perform. It's another example of an old technique that used to be performed with a landmark-based or tactile approach. Ultrasound guidance has increased the safety and efficacy of the block, and it's being used with increasing frequency for a variety of indications. The rectus muscle stretches from the costal cartilages of the thorax to the pubis in the midline of the abdomen. The muscle is encircled by a tubular sheath of tough fascia that extends medially from the convergence of the fascia that lines the oblique and transverses abdominus muscles. The spinal nerves that innervate the abdomen travel in the tap plane before entering this rectus sheath. They pass superficially through the muscle, penetrating the anterior sheath before innervating the skin and subcutaneous tissues of the midline of the abdomen. The inferior and superior epigastric arteries run within the substance of the muscle as well, and care should be taken to avoid these during the block. The technique involves depositing local anesthetic on the undersurface of the muscle, between the muscle itself and the posterior wall of the sheath. Since this posterior rectus sheath space is continuous along the entirety of the muscle, we can deposit local in one location and, within reason, expect it to extend up and down within the sheath, anesthetizing the corresponding nerves. The transducer is placed over the muscle in the transverse orientation. The needle can be advanced from any direction, but our preference is to perform an in-plane technique from the lateral aspect. The rectus sheath block is ideal for any procedure on the midline. Early landmark-based techniques were primarily used for umbilical hernia repair and other peri-umbilical procedures, and 20 mils of local anesthetic on each side would get you approximately 1 to 2 levels up and 1 to 2 levels down. We use this block for midline laparotomies, and for that indication we perform four separate injections, two at the level of the umbilicus and two at the midpoint between the umbilicus and the xiphoid process. 20 mils of local anesthetic at each site should result in blockade of most, if not all, the midline of the abdomen. Of course, you can pick and choose where along the muscle you do the block depending on where the incisions are, which is partly why this block is so attractive. This is a view of the inside of the abdominal wall, looking anteriorly. Note the arcuate line. This is where the posterior rectus sheath terminates, about a third of the distance from the umbilicus to the pubis. You don't want to perform the rectus sheath block below this line, as there's no backstop, and the next layer below the muscle is transversalis fascia and then peritoneum. For lower abdominal work, we'll start scanning at the umbilicus, then move down 2-3 to three centimeters, ensuring that we can still visualize the posterior rectus sheath on the ultrasound image. Again, we don't want to do the block much below the umbilicus due to the absence of the posterior rectus sheath in that area. Here's what you're going to be looking for. A lens or feather-shaped muscle encircled by bright hyperechoic fascia. You want to see the characteristic train tracks or double white lines of the posterior rectus sheath. That's your target. You can appreciate the bright line below the sheath. That's the peritoneum. Okay, so here's what this looks like. We see the needle entering from the lateral aspect, traveling through the rectus muscle. The aim is to pass just through the rectus muscle without passing through the sheath itself. You may feel a small give and then some resistance as the blunt needle meets the tough fascia. After negative aspiration, a test injection is performed which confirms that the tip is not intramuscular and is indeed in the potential space beneath the muscle. You should see the muscle lifting off the bright fascia and the local spreading both medially and laterally. It's common for the first injection to be intramuscular. Better to be safe and then have to advance than inadvertently advance too deep. Once you've injected your 20 mils, the needle is withdrawn and the procedure is repeated on the other side. The rectus sheath block can only be expected to provide somatic analgesia of the abdominal midline and doesn't block any visceral fibers. However, it performs really well in many settings, including, somewhat surprisingly, large midline laparotomies. Studies like this one have confirmed that the analgesic value of the block can be impressive in this case, roughly equivalent to thoracic epidural. And finally, here are some tips for rectus sheath block. First, the rectus muscle extends more laterally than we might think. That's a good thing because it means that even with a midline dressing on, an ultrasound transducer can still be positioned to visualize the muscle at the conclusion of surgery or in the PACU as a rescue block. Number two, I like to rotate the probe 90 degrees after my injection so it's in the parasagittal orientation. You'll still see the muscle in the rectus sheath, and with this view you'll be able to track the local anesthetic bolus up and down the sheath to confirm that you're getting the appropriate spread. And number three, the epigastric arteries are no joke. There have been case reports of significant hematomas occurring after blind rectus sheath blocks. Putting color Doppler on before you insert your needle is always a good idea, but it's absolutely mandatory in this technique to confirm that your trajectory is free and clear.